Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. A very, very happy feast of the Annunciation and the feast of Tangasa College. Unfortunately, we are not there to celebrate together, but we are united in prayer in spirit. Being the feast of the Annunciation, let me begin our prayer with the Angelus. I shall say it in Latin. Angelus Domini Nunciabut Marie. E concepit de Spiritu Santo. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, bendicta tu in mulieribus, et bendictus frutus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc in in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Ece, Angela Domini, fiat mihi secundum verbum tuum. Ave Maria, piena de gratia, fine, eh, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora per nobis peccatoribus, nunc in denora mortis nostre. Amen. Et verbum caro factus est, et habitabit in nobis. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, bendicta te in mulieribus, et bendictus frutus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora per nobis peccatoribus, nunc in denora mortis nostre. Amen. Ora per nobis, Santa Dei, genitrix. Ut digni efficiamur formationibus Christi, oremus. Gratiam tuam crescimus Domine, mentibus nostris infunde ut qui angelo nunciande Christi fili tui incarnationem coniovimus, per passionem eus et crucem, ad resurrectionis gloriam producamur per eundum Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Gloria Padri, et Filio et Spiritu et Santo, incuter in principe nom et nunc et semper, in secula seculorum. Amen. In Domine Padris, et Filii, et Spiritui Sancti. Amen. Good. We greeted our Blessed Mother. We recalled the mystery of our incarnation, and the task that we have today is to look at the qualities of a minister. What are the human, intellectual, spiritual, and pastoral qualities that we must cultivate in order to be a good minister of the Lord? Now, I am going to rely for this presentation on the uh, apostolic exhortation of Pope John Paul II, now Saint Paul Pastores Dabo Wobis, this apostolic exhortation. I will give you shepherds. And then this uh, apostolic exhortation is primarily meant uh, for the priestly formation, and it is valid for every ministerial formation. The Pope speaks about four dimensions of our formation. What are the four dimensions? First, the human dimension, the human formation. The second, spiritual formation third, intellectual formation, and fourth, pastoral formation. Of course, uh, not that it, one formation comes after the other. Uh, uh, it, all these four somehow go simultaneously together in our life, but of course, the one with which we normally start our human life is with regard to the human formation that happens primarily in the family. And the Pope in Pastoris Dava Wobis, number 43, says, The whole work of priestly ministry and ministerial formation would be deprived of its necessary foundation if it lacked, uh, if it lacked human formation. Uh, now, therefore, let us take the first dimension, the human formation. What does it imply? What is involved here? Pastores Dawa Wobis 43, molding the personality. The minister should mold his or her personality in such a way that it becomes a bridge and not an obstacle. Notice the word, the bridge and not an obstacle for others in meeting with Christ. And if so, we must take, make sure that we form ourselves well in our human formation. This asks for the love for the truth, uh, love the truth. In other words, a minister cannot be a liar. 
And I should not lie. Unfortunately, something that I notice often in the lives of many ministers that they frequently lie. They deceive the religious, the priests, uh, those who are close to the church. You expect them to speak the truth, but often it is the opposite nowadays that I notice. It is a tragedy. Uh, the liar uh, is the devil. Jesus told the Jews, your father is the devil who is a liar. Lying is very bad. Love the truth. Speak the truth. It is very, very important to be a good minister. When our people discover that we cannot be relied on for speaking the truth, we are lying, we are deserving, we are losing them. They will go away. Nobody would want to be lied to. Just like I don't want anyone to lie to me, I feel very upset and angry when I discover someone lied to me, deceived me, or tried to deceive me. So too, every other person feels the same. When I lie to that person, I may succeed for some time, but the moment he discovers or she discovers that I lied to him, he will feel very bad, and uh, the temptation is to go away. Second, to be loyal, to be faithful to the word. If I promise something, I must be I must be keeping that promise. I must be loyal, loyal to the church, loyal to the people whom I serve. To respect every person. Respect. Every human being possesses the dignity of the image of God. Everyone was created the image and likeness of God. So basic human dignity, irrespective of gender, status, provenience, is an essential quality that every minister must possess. To have a sense of justice, justice is sense of wanting to do what I want others do to me. And the golden rule, keeping the golden rule, I must do what uh, I, I long to long others do to me to others. I must be so depending with God, there is the justice of religion. I must worship him. Uh, with those who are closest to us, I must defend them, protect them, nourish them, feed them. Those who are a little far away, I must respect them. All this is part of justice. Then to be true to their word, to their word, to keep one's promises. That if I say something and promise something, the other knows that yes, uh, that person is genuine. He will keep the word. To be genuinely compassionate. What does it mean to be genuinely compassionate? It means that I I know how to suffer with others. Compassion is suffer. Feel for others. Not uh, to, uh, make a show uh, to say sweet sounding words but in the heart there is no compassion no remember the lord looks at the heart uh, and not the external words and everything that we say compassion to be men of integrity uh, what does it mean to be men of integrity people who are integral are integral there is a unity between one's thought word and deed so what one thinks is what one says and what one says is what one does so there is harmony between one's thought word and deed and such people are people of integrity we must learn to do that to think rightly by learning the word of god by learning the teachings of the church by learning the natural law etc we think rightly we speak what is in our mind with the charity of course but we speak the truth with the charity and we are genuine people then to be balanced in judgment and behavior it is said that the virtue lies in the middle people who are balanced are, are not at the extreme they make sound judgments and they are balanced in their behavior now these are some of the qualities and others human qualities, capacity to relate to others. The relationship is a major area of, uh, of our life. All those who are ministers certainly have to relate, not only to uh, their close family members, but so many other people. And people, therefore, we need to cultivate qualities of relationship. 
What are some of those? Not being arrogant, not being quarrelsome, being affable, lovable, uh, approachable, hospitable, welcoming, sincerity in words and heart, prudent, uh, discreet, generous, ready to serve, capable of apparent and brotherly relationship, capable of encouraging relationships in others, quick to understand, quick to forgive, quick to console. Uh, those are important qualities. Uh, these are important qualities of relationship. Then we must uh, train ourselves to affective maturity, education and development of affective maturity. Now we are looking at our passion, especially our drives within us, the sexual drive, the drive for food, the life drive for intimacy, the drive for pleasure. Here, one of the major areas where we have to, you know, form ourselves is the area of sexuality, education to sexuality, education to true friendship, education to commitment to celibacy. Now, one of the areas where very, very many ministers can fall easily is, is in the area of this affective maturity, the area of relationships, especially when it comes to relationship with the opposite sex. But these days, it can also be of the same sex. Somehow, um, the homosexual tendencies seem to be it will be increasing in the, in the secular societies among the elite in a special way. Therefore, we have to train ourselves uh, and discipline ourselves, especially in the use of our, our freedom. Uh, freedom. Remember, we have uh, three faculties. One is the intellect. The second uh, is the, uh, the passion the passion, the sense appetites, and the third is the will, the appetite or the desire, what we want to do at the level of the will. Now, freedom is at the level of the will, but this freedom must be guided, or the will must be guided more by the intellect, by the right reason, by natural law and supernatural law, or natural truth and supernatural truth, rather than our sense appetite. Sense appetite means the what we see, we desire. Uh, when we see a beautiful person or hand, handsome person, uh, uh, there might be movements of lust within us, that is a consequence of the senses, sense appetite. Or when I see a tasty food, there would be uh, the sense appetite rising. But the intellect must control, intellect might direct of the sense appetites and the world must decide what is good and what is right. And this is a training and this training is a training of mastering oneself. The will learns, the appetite of the will, the free, learns to obey the intellect, the right reason, rather than the sense appetites. Unless the sense appetite corresponds to what is true, what is good, what is holy. At, at times, and most times, does not correspond when the mind is direct our sense appetite. And therefore, arrive at a personal discipline. And then, education in the area of moral conscience. Moral conscience, formation of our conscience. Conscience is the natural reason of right and wrong. A conscience is a natural law inscribed in us. It can also be called the voice of God within us. And uh, this needs to be formed. Why? Because our intellect does not know the truth by per se completely. We suffer from ignorance, we suffer from passions, concupiscence, that inclination to what is pleasurable, etc. And therefore, we need to form our conscience and learn to obey, to keep the moral obligations, that those are ways of forming our intellect, our passions, and our will. In this way, we form ourselves in our human dimension, the human dimension. So uh, a good minister 
recognizes that unless he becomes a mature person, uh, uh, a person of relationship, a person who knows what is right and wrong, who the person who is able to direct his own sexual drives and the other sense appetites, uh, he cannot be unless he forms in this. He cannot be a good minister. So human qualities, uh, human formation is a foundational formation. Normally this happens and this should be done at home and in the early years of formation to ministry, the early years of formation to ministry. In the religious and priestly life, it is done, much of it is to be done in the, um, in the aspirantate stage, in the post lency stage, the novitiate stage, and the early years of formation, the human aspect of our formation is to be taken care of. And uh, the next sections, the next, we shall be proceeding with the other dimensions, the spiritual, intellectual, and pastoral. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen.